Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Welcome to the Southside Adventist Church. My name is Roger. And uh, I am not a, a uh, pastor. I am a, a, a layperson, elder of the church. And, uh, but I believe that God can uh, cause rocks to sing praises, right? So we'll be all right. <laughs> um, it's a beautiful morning out, isn't it? Amen. You got your guitar with you today? No, I didn't. No? Um, so... This is all I have is wow. Explaining why I believe God is worthy of worship for all eternity. So here we are at part 17. Hard to imagine, right? But don't worry. If you haven't seen all, all, all the, if you haven't been here for all the parts, you'll still get the general idea. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, we've had a wonderful time of uh, worship and refreshing already this morning. We had a wonderful Sabbath school. Uh, I'm sure that the, the children's classes were wonderful. We've had uh, incredible singing from our, from our choir. Isn't that amazing? That's nice to say, isn't it? From our choir. That's very cool. And uh, um, headed for the promised land. Amen. Children's story. Uh, Nancy and I were sitting up here. We were looking at that uh, aluminum foil. And we're thinking if Carol has uh, brownies down there, we're going down front. <laughs> Carol, <laughs> Carol does a great job with the uh, children's stories. We always have really good children's stories here. Well, uh, I am uh, an engineer by trade, and therefore I think in terms of uh, structure and organization and so um, I think God uses us as we are um, and he and he brings us along and he develops us and grows us um, uh, so uh, there's a seven part series rotation that happens here uh, the first is, uh, as is usual with the Seventh-day Adventist presentation, we always like to have uh, confidence in our Bible. So, do you have your Bible? You guys, you folks have your Bibles? Uh, it could be on your, on your phone, on your smartphone, that's all fine, or your uh, iPad or whatever. Um, is, this, is this your most prized treasure? Is this your most prized treasure? When you, when you have struggles, you know, I, I carry these little Bible promise books around too, and I've also got an app for that. You know, you can look it up, uh, Bible promises. There's an app for that. Yeah. And then you can download, you know, there, and Chris knows too, there's an app for your Seventh-day Adventist hymnal, and, and I use that from time to time. And it's just nice to have that electronics and have all those resources, LMG White. It's like I've got the full library. All of Ellen White's writings right there on your phone. It's amazing. Right, and of course you got the internet there, so you can you can search stuff that you that you uh, want to try and find. Uh, so the second one is creation. Third is God's character. Uh, fourth is the church. Uh, fifth is relationships. Uh, sixth is about victory, and seven is uh, always a focus on rest, resting in Christ as my Sabbath, appreciating the the Sabbath lifestyle of getting good sleep. And making sure that your life isn't too busy, Nancy. And, uh, and then, of course, the creation Sabbath memorial that we have each week to come together as a church family in our church home, our beautiful church home, and be restored, be refreshed. In each of these seven key uh, concepts that we cover in the series, in the rotation... Um, and we're, today we're on um, number three, which is God's character. So today, even though we talk about God's character on a regular basis, I mean, that's really, that's really the fundamental aspect of why God is worthy of worship, right? It's not just what He has done for us. It's why He did it that makes God worthy of worship for all eternity. That's why sin will not arise a second time. Amen. So today we're going to focus on God's character. And um, 
And each one of these concepts, these key series rotation items, there are 10 key elements. First of all, it's why God is worthy of worship. That's the whole focus. Second is um, uh, how Jesus represents the Father to us. How Jesus, as God, represents God to us in His life. A concept that we want to look at is this language. We talk about the great controversy. We find that the truth in the Scripture is not just about God's plan of salvation for me. It's about what He can do with me, even in sinful flesh. That He can bring glory to His name. You know, the Bible says that even the angels long to look into the mystery of salvation and understand it. For Jesus, in His earthly life, and what He has done for us, and His condescension, His sinless life, His passion, His resurrection, His ascension, His priesthood ministry on our behalf this very day, He has expressed God in a way that has never been done before and will never be done again. So through the life of Christ, we see God's character uh, presented in its fullest. We are at a war. We are under siege. The three pounds of flesh between our ears, the idea of choice, we are in a daily battle, moment by moment. Uh, we talked this morning in Sabbath school about uh, choice and faith and the concepts of, of sin and understanding how that ties to our choice. We are a battle. Uh, the last part of Romans chapter 7 talks about this inner struggle that we all fight with on a daily basis. And this will be true until Jesus comes and ends this. We look at these things and we, we understand the why of the Holy Spirit. Part of our uh, understanding of this, of this battle, this great controversy, this cosmic conflict, the warfare, the spiritual warfare that the, warfare that the Bible tells us about, um, has to do, uh, uh, this spiritual warfare has to do with um, explaining why we need the Holy Spirit. Part of what we say is we need this outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And it's such a blessing to know that the Father is pouring out His Holy Spirit. He is willing to give us this great gift. We just need to be prepared and ready for it. Part of being ready for the Holy Spirit is to understand our deficiencies and to know why we need the Holy Spirit. Wrestling with God on a daily basis in overcoming those things that are a distraction from His goodness. You know, how do we learn this battle? How do we learn this warfare? So this is a part of uh, the great controversy and in understanding the key to how we will receive more of the Holy Spirit. That makes sense to everybody? You okay with that? If you don't sense your need for the Holy Spirit, it is difficult for God to pour Him out to you. Amen. We need to understand the language of Christianity. When I ask for Jesus to come into my heart, what am I saying? When we talk about the three angels' messages... And giving the call to our neighbors to come out of her, my people, come out of Babylon. We need to understand what this language is saying. So these are key concepts that we need to understand. We need to understand them clearly and they need to be based on Scripture. So uh, Nancy read a little simple thank you card that I did for, uh, for the Kairos prison ministry. Kairos is interdenominational. And so I believe God has led me to participate in the Kairos prison ministry for that, for partly for that very reason. Uh, not just because I believe they truly teach the scripture. Uh, they teach um, sanctification and justification even more so than what I think most of them understand. So they teach more about uh, some of the fundamental truths that we have uh, in the Adventist church uh, than they even know. 
And there's folks from, I mean, one of the best Sabbaths I've ever had was uh, serving on a Kairos weekend at Putnamville correctional facility and uh, it was Sabbath and one of my Catholic friends while he was giving a talk to the room of 100 men uh, 40 plus offenders participants and 40 plus uh, volunteers was he wished me happy Sabbath uh, while he was giving his presentation what do you think it looks like when you when it says when the Bible talks about us um, Come out of her, my people. So we know these fundamental truths that there's, God only sees two. He doesn't see Methodist and Lutheran and Catholic and Seventh-day Adventist. Uh, he doesn't see, uh, you know, assemblies of God and Pentecostal. What he sees are sheep and goats. Goat, and, uh, wheat and tares. Wise man built on a rock, foolish man built on a sand. The wise virgins and the foolish virgins. This is what God sees. So what do you think it will look like when he's asking us to go to folks who have been confused by truth that, uh, that has been mistaught, misrepresented? How will that look? Is it me going into a Baptist church tomorrow morning and saying, hey, you guys got it all messed up? That's not going to be effective. That's not going to work. It needs to be through loving people and being friends with people. So I'm very grateful that the Kairos ministry affords me that opportunity to make relationships with folks and then behind the scenes discuss uh, some of the truths that are in the Bible that have been uh, confused. So I'm very thankful for this church. Uh, it is very uh, much a blessing to me personally uh, for the, the way the church supports uh, efforts in that ministry. Uh, there is a Kairos weekend going on as we speak, uh, Indiana Women's Prison. <clears throat> um, and this coming week uh, is where you folks help support me is in a, another Putnamville weekend. Putnamville weekend number 15. So for uh, over seven years, um, Kairos has been in there doing uh, two big weekends a year plus continuing ministry of weekly prayer and share, monthly reunions. And uh, I usually go in once a month for uh, prayer and share. And uh, we're going in this coming weekend. We'll go in on Thursday afternoon. Uh, they're long days, Thursday until about 8 p.m. And then uh, Friday and Saturday will be about 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. You know, 12, 13 hours uh, a day and then on Sunday. And we will serve 42. Actually, we're, gonna, we're only going to be able to serve 36 because the volunteers, we, don't, we didn't have quite enough volunteers. So um, we're kind of going through a recruitment phase and asking folks, everyone that we can, anyone that uh, wants to be a supporter, to help us in prayer and pray that prayer from, is it uh, Matthew 9, 37 to 38? The harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he might send more labor. Let me ask you something. What is the difference between a disciple... This is rhetorical, <laughs> uh, so you don't have to answer, but you can if you want. Uh, what's the difference between a, a, a laborer in the fields and a disciple? How about a follower of Christ? What's the difference between a follower of Christ and a disciple? Okay, so the answer is nothing, right? Nothing at all. There's no difference. The Great Commission... Where Jesus says, go ye therefore into all the world and baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching all things that I have shown you. Right? So discipleship is about friendship. It's relationships. It's about making connection with folks and then bringing them along in their maturity and understanding in the relationship of Christ. Whether it's, it's not just about getting warm bodies. It's about folks who understand the commitment and ready to do it. Right? We don't want a laborer to come out in the middle of the field and just sit around. <coughs> Interesting. So I'm very thankful to know that our church has so many things. Look at this. Pale horse rides. Isn't that amazing? Uh, we've got this. Uh, we've got the, the Wiener Roast fundraiser. Uh, this, this evening, unfortunately, I will not be able to be there. Um, I know I let a couple people down there, but I, I didn't know about it too much until just recently. So 
Uh, but, but it's very thankful that our church is involved in so many different aspects of inreach and outreach. And so if you are not already uh, participating uh, in, in, in one of those activities, I strongly encourage you to do so. This is not icing on the cake. This is a key ingredient. In Kairos, we talk about a three-legged stool. And that three-legged stool, the seat is your relationship with God. And the three-legged stool, the three legs are your prayer, your Bible study, and your service. And to me, that is extremely biblical because in the Old, in the Old Testament, in the sanctuary, the heavenly sanctuary as well, the holy place had three pieces of furniture. There was the uh, altar of incense, that represents our prayer. There's the table of showbread, that represents our reading and understanding of Scripture. And then there's this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Right? Christian service is not optional in God's plan of salvation for you. Um, there's something that uh, in these in these ten key concepts. Um, do you believe in victory? Do you? Good, good. I do too. I think the Bible clearly teaches victory in Christ. One thing that you should never get tired of hearing of, and this is a key component in that understanding of your relationship with God, and that is that each one of you. Please don't ever get tired of hearing this. And please know that this comes from, from the heart of God Himself. It says that uh, it's just, just, each one of you is unique. You're one of a kind. You are a priceless treasure to the heart of God. Okay. I guess we can get started now. Amen. Hallelujah. I always like to start from my favorite author. This is uh, uh, Sister Ellen. A little bit long. This is from Acts of the Apostles. From the beginning, God has wrought through His people to bring blessing to the world. That's the purpose. Okay? That's why we need the Holy Spirit. Everybody listening? Do you hear purpose? This is my purpose. God has wrought through His people to bring blessing to the world. To the ancient Egyptian nation, God made Joseph a fountain of life. Through the integrity of Joseph, the life of the whole people was preserved. Through Daniel, God saved the life of all the wise men of Babylon. And these deliverances are as object lessons. They illustrate the spiritual blessings offered to the world through connection with the God whom Joseph and Daniel worshipped. Everyone in whose heart Christ... Who? Everyone, how about that? Everyone in whose heart Christ abides, everyone who will show forth His love to the world is a worker together with God for the blessing of humanity. We have a purpose. We can't just sit down and say, all right, way to go. Good job, God. As He receives from the Savior grace to impart to, to others, from His whole being flows forth the tide of spiritual life. It's, it's, it's not separate. As he receives from the Savior grace to impart to others, that's how we get the Holy Spirit. That's how we get the grace is to have and understand and recognize and appreciate that God is giving me this beautiful opportunity to share with others His grace. And when, I, when we recognize this, this opportunity, Sabbath school teacher, piano, choir, children's story, uh, Pathfinders, Iska, Kairos, all of it, when God puts an opportunity in your pathway to share grace, that's when you receive grace, it's as clear as it can be. God chose Israel to reveal His character to men. 
Remember, our topic today is God's character, right? Okay. Uh, he desired them to be as wells of salvation in, in, to, in the world. To them were committed the oracles of heaven, the revelation of God's will. In the early days of Israel, the nations of the world, through corrupt practices, had lost the knowledge of God. They had once known Him, but because they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. Their foolish heart was dark, darkened. That's Romans 1.21. Uh, we may have read that this morning in uh, Sabbath school. Isn't that fascinating? Um, the choreography of grace... Somebody said that to me last, last week. The choreography of grace. Isn't that amazing? Yet in His mercy, God did not blot them out of existence. He purposed to give them an opportunity of again becoming acquainted with Him through His chosen people. See, listen folks, we need to understand this. And this is one of those very simple, fundamental aspects of how we speak to folks who are not Adventists. The children of Israel were not chosen for salvation. They were chosen to share salvation. Amen. There's a big difference. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <clears throat> Through the teachings of the sacrificial service, Christ was to be uplifted before all nations, and all who would look to Him should live. This is very important. No one has ever been saved by the blood of animals. No one has ever been saved or will be saved by works. It's always by the willingness of God to condescend Himself, live a perfect life on this planet, and die on a cross. That is the only thing we have. Christ was the foundation of the Jewish economy. The whole system of types and symbols was a compacted prophecy of the gospel, a presentation in which were bound up the promises of redemption. But the people of Israel lost sight of their high privilege as God's representatives. They forgot God and failed to fulfill their holy mission. The blessings they received brought no blessing to the world. They stagnated. All their advantages they appropriated for their own glorification. They shut themselves away from the world in order to escape temptation. Does that sound familiar? The restrictions that God had placed upon their association with idolaters as a means of preventing them from conforming to the practices of the heathen, they used to build up a wall of separation between themselves and all other nations. They robbed God of the service He required of them, and they robbed their fellow men of religious guidance and a holy example. Let there be no doubt that we are at a spiritual warfare and two of the greatest aspects or weapons that our Lord's adversary uses against us is our systems of religion and the Scripture themselves. Amen. Okay, in this go-around of the seven series, we are focused on uh, spiritual weapons, and we are talking about praises. Please know from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 to 18, and this is something that needs to be part of our committed to memory. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing in everything. Give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. If you've ever thought, if, have you ever thought, has anybody ever come and asked you, have they come and asked you, said, I just wish I could figure out God's will for my life. Right? People ask you, I just, I'm just looking for God's will. Well, when you find it, you need to share it. And, and here, here it is. Rejoice evermore. It's a battle. It's a daily battle. Sometimes we find ourselves on our knees and we're weeping. We're clenching our fists together. Uh, Two-handed warfare. What is it? What, what is it? And, right? And hand-to-hand -hand combat. And we're like, dear God, please help me. I'm, I'm about ready to fall with this thing. Lord, help me. I, I, I've committed this sin again. Please forgive me. And you know with confidence. He says, come therefore boldly to the throne of grace that you might receive uh, grace in the time of need. We know that God forgives gives us when we fall. And we know that God gives us grace to keep us from falling. Amen. Right? There were a little bit more amens on the first one than on the second one. So we got a little work to do there. All right, we got a little work to do there. 
Both are true. Okay, so um, very simple, ask, believe, claim. Uh, this is an interactive sermon. Uh, you do not have to interact with me. Uh, we are going to interact with the uh, throne room of God. How many folks in, the, in, the, in, the, in our uh, church home this morning, how many believe that we are surrounded by angels and God's presence of the Holy Spirit? Say amen. 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 Angels. Who knows? 6,000 years old. I don't know. 15 billion years old. Angels, these angelic beings. Uh, who would never claim to be as perfect as Christ. In fact, doesn't Sister Ellen say that they veil their faces when, before they even speak His name? Holy angels. They get a glimpse of God, and all they can do is shake their heads and say, Holy, holy, holy. Amen. So here we are, together, in the presence of in the essence, is this our sanctuary? Is this His sanctuary? Are we not in our hearts communing with the great God of heaven that created all things, who speaks? He speaks, says, let there be light. And there's light. Darkness runs away. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Philippians 2.5. Let... Right? God said, let there be light, there was light. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Isn't that a command? The same kind of command, right? Okay, so here we go. So what we will do is, um, uh, and, and for those, you know, we don't want to skirt how serious the spiritual warfare is, the hand-to-hand -hand combat, the discouragement. Sometimes all you can do is groan in your spirit. You don't even have words. So, Lord, help me. Um, I heard this somewhere. Uh, it was just, let me give you a tip about prayer. Sometimes it's just as simple as, thank you, I'm sorry, please help. So there's a tip, T-I-P. Thank you, I'm sorry, please help. So here's seven examples. We're going to start with our... Uh, we're going to start now? Okay, here we go. How about Romans chapter 4? That's our scripture reading for the day. Romans chapter 4. Uh, in the New Testament, and then you have Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. Uh, there are 66 Bibles in the Protestant Bible. Uh, the Catholic Bible is a little bit different. It has a few extra uh, books, and it also has a few extra chapters here and there. Um, it's good for you to become familiar with touching and moving pages or, or finding out how to use your app on your smartphone be well versed in understanding how to find scriptures. Whether the Holy Spirit puts something in your mind and you look it up, whether it's topical, whether it's of character, uh, get to know your Bible. Get to know where those 66 books are. And so we are in Romans, and we're in chapter 4 and verse 20. We're going to read 20 through 22. He, that is Abraham, staggered not at the promise. The word staggered there means no doubt. Uh, he staggered not means no doubt at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able to perform. Fully persuaded. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. You want the righteousness of Christ? Do you want the righteousness of Christ? Here it is, right here. Right here it is. Fully persuaded. Aren't isn't everyone in the room? Aren't you convinced that at some point in your life, possibly this morning already, you know. You are fully persuaded, convinced, there is no question in your mind that God has moved in your life. Amen. Would you like to praise God for that? 
would you? Okay, we're going to have interactive prayer right here. I'll say a short prayer for myself and for us, and then you guys can have a few moments of silence to pray for yourselves. And then I'll give it a little bit of time, and I'll say amen. Uh, pray with me, please. Father God in heaven, we thank you, Lord, uh, for your scriptures. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you, Lord, for enlightenment. Uh, Lord, we thank you, dear God, uh, for the example of Abraham and how he believed you, Lord, and that it was counted to him for righteousness. You gave him faith. You revealed yourself to him, and you are revealing yourself to us today. And we give you thanks, Lord. I praise your holy name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Now, if you're still praying, you keep on praying because uh, uh, you need to finish what you're doing. So if, if you're still praying to, to God in His throne room about praising Him for the example of Abraham and, and persuaded faith, oh Lord, let our praises be prayer requests. Let's go to uh, Psalms. Psalms is in the Old Testament. Um, the word Bible actually means collection of books. And the collection of books as we know it um, in the Protestant Bible um, is grouped. And uh, Psalms is found in what we call the poetry books. It's after the history books, and it's before the major prophecy books. So if you get to Isaiah, you've gone too far. If you've, uh, you, uh, you haven't gone far enough, and um, etc. So here we go, Psalm 22, and we're going to look at 22, verses 22 to 23. Now, it's very important to understand uh, what we're reading here. Um, we believe this to be a psalm of David. Not all 150 psalms were written by David. Some are actually attributed to Moses and uh, others. But we believe that Psalm 22 is actually uh, a Psalm of David. And, uh, of course, we've brought this up before, um, but I want to mention it again. I think it's important. It's an important aspect of understanding uh, what God is trying to say to us through the psalmist in Psalm 22. I'm going to read verse uh, 1. I'm going to start at verse 1. I'm going to say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? All right. Where have we heard those words before? Jesus on the cross. That's right. Jesus on the cross. So here we have, uh, as is common with the Psalms of David, we have this idea of, of Christ speaking through David. Let's go to 22. Verse 22. We're in Psalm 22. We're looking at uh, verse 22 and 23. So we could say this I here in verse 22, we could say that's maybe Jesus. Maybe that's David. Maybe it's me and you. Maybe me and you are inspired by the Holy Spirit. And here I go. I'm going to say it. I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise thee. Ye that fear the Lord, praise him. All ye the seed of Jacob, glorify him. And fear him, all ye the seed of Israel. What do you think? Is that a fulfillment of those two verses right here and now? Right now? Right this very minute? Is that not the Holy Spirit speaking to your heart? Do you not feel like you are a part of the congregation? Are you not my brethren? Are you not? I'm asking you, listen. Are you not the seed of Jacob? Are you not the seed of Israel? Are you not children of Abraham? Isn't that by faith? Aren't we studying the great character of God? Look at the character of God. Look at it right now. Look at Him. Thank you, Father God. Is not our Father God showing us by His Holy Spirit the power of His Holy Spirit in this very moment? All right, let's have a, a short prayer with us. Father God, I thank you, Lord. I will declare to my brother, I thank you, Lord. I declare your goodness, your greatness, the awesome power of your Holy Spirit and your ability to move in this very day, in this very moment. Lord, my heart is lifted up. I am passionate to praise you and worship you. Thank you, most holy God, tender, merciful Father.
to the glory of the Father. Hallelujah. Amen. So, so this interactive sermon thing, uh, no one's really come up to me and say, hey, you got to stop that. Uh, and nobody, <laughs> nobody's really complained. Um, I, I think it's right. I think it's going to take a little while to catch on, but I think it's right. I think uh, it's a good thing. So keep with me here. Um, next. Okay, now how many verses we do? We do seven, right? We're on number three. And uh, believe me, I'm ready for potluck lunch myself. So here we go. How about, uh, let's, look, you know, I live by myself. Potluck lunch is it for me, man. I mean, I'm telling you. Who doesn't love our potluck lunch? It's awesome. Uh, let's go to Isaiah. That's in the Old Testament. It's uh, part of the major prophets. So that is after uh, the poetry books. So we are going to Isaiah, which happens to be the first of the major prophets. And we'll look at Isaiah chapter 6. And now this is a, uh, a favorite passage. It's a very um, popular and recognized passage. All right, so here we are. Here we are in God's sanctuary. Amen. Hallelujah. Here we are. God's sanctuary. Our hearts are united with God. The six-winged seraphim. Oh, man. Here we are. We're surrounded by these angels. And all they can do is they shake their head. Holy, holy, holy. Where does all this stuff come from? Here we go. Isaiah chapter 6 and verses uh, 1 through 3. In the year the king Uzziah died, I saw... Also, the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and His train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain He covered His face. With twain He covered His feet. And with twain He did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of His glory. Well, we need, to, we need to read that probably and give that a little context for us. I, mean, I don't know, when did Isaiah write? Uh, around 740 B.C. or something like that? I mean, well, that's 2,700 years ago. I mean, that doesn't have anything to do with me, does it? Let's take a quick look. Um, let's take a quick look at Revelation chapter 4. Keep your finger here because we're going to pray over this one. But let's take a look at Revelation chapter 4 verse 8. Most of you guys know what this is. It's just a confirmation. It just puts things in, con in, in context. It, it brings it to light for today. Okay, so John, the revelator, he probably wrote this, I don't know what, A.D. 90? Something like that maybe? Somewhere in a ballpark. Uh, so this is still a couple thousand years ago, but you know it's 800 years apart, and we see that, uh, we'll see that this is very consistent. Re Revelation chapter 4 and verse 8. Let's see if this makes sense. Revelation is the last book of the 66 books of the Bible, so it is in the New Testament. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. So what do you think? Does this apply to us today? Is the throne room of God today surrounded by angels? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's their greatest pleasure. Let's say a prayer over this. Most holy God, it is our humble privilege to participate in loving you and worshiping you, adoring you, and reverencing you with your holy angels, Lord. It is truly an honor. Jesus name. Amen. Let's uh, go back to the left now. We'll go back to Psalms 
And uh, we're going to look at Psalm 145, verse 3. And while you're turning there, I'm just going to remind you of this passage here uh, in uh, Psalm 22 where we've already been this morning. Um, I read verse 1, but uh, I also need to read verse, uh, verses, uh, verse 3. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. When you are praising God, He lives in those praises. There's, there's a spiritual reality that happens to you when in spite of circumstances in your life, in spite of how you are feeling, you lift up your voice in praise to God. Was it Paul and Silas that was in prison and they started singing praises at midnight? Right? Amen. No matter how bad it gets, no matter how rough it gets, no matter what things look like around you, no matter how you feel, lift your heart up and praise to God, and He will make it better. Psalm 145.3. Oh, this is just about praise, I think. Just about praise. 145.3. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. And His greatness is unsearchable. I say God is great. Amen. Right? <laughs> he's, he's great. Oh, he's the greatest. And He has greatness. Let's say a prayer over that. Father God in heaven, truly You are great. Lord, if You are for us, who can be against us? Lord, lift us up by your knowledge of our great need. Lift us up in the grace and faith of your Son, Jesus, by your Holy Spirit. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's move to uh, Hebrews, please. So we're going back to the New Testament. I'm very comfortable with just saying that Paul wrote Hebrews, the book of Hebrews. Some people like to argue about that, but I'm very comfortable with saying Paul wrote Hebrews. Hebrews is right after the T's. Your first and second Thessalonians. First and Second Timothy and Titus. Okay, are we in Hebrews? Here we are. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 15. Of course, uh, uh, for Sabbath afternoon, you might just read Hebrews 11. Uh, that is that great um, chapter, Heroes of Faith chapter, which is always a blessing. Hebrews 13, 15. By Him, and in this context, from verse 12, we know this is Jesus. By Him, therefore. What's that therefore, therefore? Is that Dave Asterick? Oh, what's his name? David Asterick? He says, what's that therefore, therefore, right? Uh, he says, uh, by Him, that is Jesus, therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to His name. Yeah, amen, hallelujah. So when we see, I want you, I, I want you to just kind of put this in the back of your mind. Um, as you read your scriptures through, you know, through the day and, and, and through the week and, and ongoing, when you read the word name, I want you to start thinking about, does it fit the context to insert the word God's character? Or whoever's character is being considered in that context. See, there's scripture in Revelation chapter 14 where it says, and that they have the names of God written in their foreheads. We need to understand what that language means. Right? I don't know that everyone who has been an Adventist all their life, maybe third generation, fifth generation Adventist, they may not really know what does that mean. 
God's name written in their foreheads. Maybe they know. Hope. It's God's character reflected in you, and it happens by continually praising Him. Amen. Is that what we're reading? Is the Spirit of God moving in your heart right now? Are you being edified? Are you, do you feel? It's not my words. It's not me. This is Scripture. We're just taking it from Scripture. Isn't it saying that we will offer... The only sacrifice that God's interested in now is the sacrifice of praise. Of service and praise. Okay, so here we go. Uh, let's have a prayer over this. Father in heaven, we offer to you the sacrifice of praise. We love you because you first loved us. And Lord, this should continually be on our lips. Let us thank you. And may all that we say and do in our lives be to the glory of your Son, Jesus. By your Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. And amen. Let's go to Revelation chapter 5 and verse 12. What's well, not hard to tell if this is all about praising God, is it? We've got some good passages here. You know, this is barely scratching the surface, these seven or eight passages praising God. I mean, it's, it's nonstop. I mean, almost the whole psalm is nothing about but praising God, right? So, uh, uh, if you ever find yourself in a situation where you're struggling to praise God because of what's going on, just read your Bible. Just read it. All you have to do is pick it up. Is ah man, I just really don't feel like praising God. And read from the song and oh, give thanks to the Lord. I just picked. I just picked a verse. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Just, just put whatever is causing you grief aside. Do not fall. Grab your Bible. Sit in a corner, eat a can of worms, and read the Bible. You see what I'm saying? Okay, uh, chapter five in Revelation and verse twelve. Saying with a loud voice, is that too loud? We'll blame Alvin. Uh, saying with a loud voice, worthy, oh there's that word, worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. I so, suppose I should read a little bit more. Let's back up to nine. Now, I want you to understand that if you believe uh, the Adventist message, which Seventh-day Adventism, Adventism means that you believe in the uh, uh, imminent, literal return of Jesus Christ as King of glory. Amen, Amen and hallelujah. And they, oh, I wonder who they is. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou was slain. This is why he's worthy. Thou was slain and hast redeemed us to God by, by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. We could throw in denomination, but we don't need to. And hast made us unto our God kings and priests. That's us. And we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders. And the number of them was 10,000 and 10,000 and thousands of thousands. And here we are with verse 12. Saying with a loud voice, worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as in their sea and all that are in them heard I saying, blessing and honor and glory and power be unto to him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. Amen. Excuse me. All right, let's pray over this. Oh, Father, it is a, a great privilege for our church family to come together in this sanctuary. Lord, in your presence, in your midst, to be refreshed by your Holy Spirit and praise the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Forever and ever. Amen. All right, one more passage, folks, and then it's uh, potluck 30. Amen. Hallelujah. Did I mention I'm a single? You know, I live by myself, and so you know, potluck is, is the deal for me. All right. Let's go to uh, Ezekiel. Now, that's in the Old Testament. 
Ezekiel is uh, one of the old, uh, it's, it's one of the major prophets. So it's after the history books, after the um, poetry books. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel. And we get to Ezekiel and chapter 36, verse 23. On the Monday night Bible study, which is a spinoff from my activities with uh, Cairo's prison ministry, on Monday nights I get to give a, an Adventist, a Seventh-day Adventist study. I call it Biblical Christianity from a Seventh-day Adventist perspective. Bible study, SDA. And that's on Monday nights, and I go in and I give a couple hours, and usually it's between 20 to 30 men show up, and I get to preach, I get to, uh, we do a Bible study on Adventism. And uh, now I've got those guys, uh, when, they, when they are leading and they're going through the different passages in the worksheet, uh, they actually lead. You know, somebody volunteers to, to read it, but, but they also are practicing learning how to show people where they're at in the Bibles. It's very cool. Very cool, very cool. God is such a, such a blessing. He, he just really just pours out His blessings. Uh, 36-23. All right, sanctify. Oh, we need the word sanctify. We need to understand justification and sanctification. Sanctify, to be made separate, to be made holy. Um, is this what salvation is? God loves me just as I am, but He loves me too much to leave me where I'm at. Okay, I didn't make that up. I heard it somewhere. 36 and verse 23. Last one, folks. Here we are. This is the last passage we'll look at and pray over. And I will sanctify my great name. So we already we know in the context that this is God speaking through Ezekiel, right? This is, this is God speaking here. He says, I, I don't know why. Why isn't the Old Testament when God speaks, why isn't that in red? I'm just saying. I think there's a, a business opportunity there, Pastor. Or maybe we come, we, we come up with a Bible where all the passages in the Old Testament that where Jesus is speaking is in red, right? When God's speaking. And I will sanctify my great name. Now we know his character, right? We're talking about his character. It's not just his name. It's his character, what his name represents. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which you have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. Amen. A time of trouble is coming. Listen, listen uh, very carefully. Spiritual warfare. A time of trouble that the earth has never seen is coming before us. We need to be well rehearsed and practiced in wrestling with God and becoming Israel. Amen. Do you understand my language? You understand my language? Israel, one who prevails with God. We cannot wait until the trouble comes. To recognize our great need this day for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's say prayer over this and then uh, we'll have some singing. Uh, most holy God, please Lord, get me out of the way. Sanctify me. Sanctify your name through me and through all of my church family, Lord. Let everyone in the hearing of my voice know the truth of your great love for us. Let our faith become unwavering today, not just when the trouble hits. We give you all thanks and honor and glory, Lord. I know that there are many prayers being offered up now. We thank you for your presence in this place. O oh Lord, truly, Thou art worthy of worship, holy, holy, holy. Amen, and God bless you. <clears throat>